Wes, Bob speaking, along with Tony. How are you, my friend? Hi, Wes. Hey, Bob and Tony. How are you doing? I'm doing fine. Good to hear your voice, and it's a pleasure to speak with you again. Uh, I had the honor to uh, talk with Wes uh, last year at this time on our sister show, Tony on Blog Talk Radio over there, the Red Sox show. And uh, we thank you uh, for your willingness to come on this show, Wes. And, uh, again, we appreciate all your uh, kindness in uh, helping us out tonight. But um, okay. let me, a little uh, background of Wes for our viewers out there. Tony played uh, six seasons in the league uh, in the uh, for the Phillies and the Red Sox between 90 and 95. Uh, fourth round pick in the 87 draft, originally signed by the Pirates, uh, traded to Philadelphia uh, ultimately, and uh, again uh, had played also uh, later in his career in Japan for a number of independent league teams. Again, uh, uh, played in the World Series in 93, but we'll get to that as we go along. But uh, Wes, I know you grew up in Chicago. Uh, first question for me, was it the White Sox, Cubs, neither? W was it always baseball for you also, Wes? Well, yeah. Uh, well, it was first the Cubs. Uh, okay. Then after uh, attending the um, uh, White Sox game, uh, you know, after going to, Mis to Comiskey Park and seeing baseball in, in a major league stadium, I just fell in love with the game overall and became a White Sox Cub fan. And, you know, that's not typical in today's world or society from a fan's point. But, mm -hmm. man, I played Major League Baseball for a living. I can do whatever I want. <laughs> <laughs> we agree with that. <laughs> and uh... I, mean, I mean, you know, in, as, as a career, Bob, you know, uh, when I was with the Phillies, you know, I wasn't a Cub fan. Like, And likewise, when I was with the Red Sox, I wasn't a White Sox fan. So... You know, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I just... <laughs> you knew where the bread was buttered, Wes. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Amen to that. Amen. <laughs> and and I, uh, I'll tell our viewers, Wes started in 90 with the, the Phillies, Tony. 91 was technically his rookie of the year. He finished fifth in the rookie of the year voting in 90, 1990. Now, the uh, this was when they played, Wes, at the old Veterans Stadium. Uh, you were there four and a half years or so. Uh, Tony and I have been there, down there. Uh, you hit 38 home runs. Oh, did you like hitting there? Is it a, considered a good hitter's park down there uh, at the Vet, Wes? Well, I'll, you know, I mean, in today's society, uh, no. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, in today's society, no. Uh, I mean, we're playing today, you know, I mean, the That's a good that's a good point and uh, I know you're very thankful for the time you did have and the majority of your time in Philly Wes uh, you played under Jim Fergosi now he's a big baseball man uh, did you consider him a player's manager and how good a, a baseball man was he well he was a baseball man indeed I mean he spent uh, half his life you know sure. as a player and as a uh, as, uh, well, whatever you want to call it uh, uh, assistant to every GM and then, you know, becoming a manager and then being another assistant as it's uh, over there and in his career, you know, to the, you know, to his unfortunate timely death on the, you know, the 14th of February this year. But mm -hmm. I mean, you know, he's a man that knew the game and uh, I, I honestly, uh, I'd never seen him play, uh, but as a, I seen him manage as a White Sox manager when I, as, as I was coming up. So That's I could probably pretty much say that uh, he, he uh, managed as he played, so he really, and playing under him, he really let uh, let us uh, self-manage. He let the veteran guys, you know, uh, yeah. uh, do, do what they had to do with the clubhouse, and he took control of his staff. 
Ah, I got you. Mm -hmm. Again, we're on the phone with former Major League Golf for the West Chamberlain. Tony, question for Wes. And Wes is such a treat to have you. What I like to ask the former Major League players is, what was your first moment on a Major League field like? And I'm, I'm sure that was all these bus rides and everything you'd done in the minors. You thought, wow, I'm finally here. Now, what took place and how much of that do you remember? Well, I mean, I remember it like yesterday. I mean, I remember uh, just... Just making it on the field as a player to take batting practice is exactly what you say. Wow, yeah. finally made it. Yeah. <laughs> it was just like taking a breath, almost like going to slap yourself or pinch yourself. <laughs> but it really didn't really settle in until I got my first start. Uh, my first seven at bats were all pinch hit. So huh. once I got my first major league start, that's when it really, really hit me. You know, that's when the butterflies mm -hmm. had really came in. You but, saw your um, name in the lineup card. Boy. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, you saw, I saw my name in the lineup card. But I, I think once, uh, you know, I, I took that field and the national anthem, you know, that's when it really hit me like, I'm playing. You know, I really made it now, huh. you know. You, you know, I mean, the, the reality of it is that you made it, you're here, but you know, you sat on the bench. I sat on the bench a few days. I didn't get right in the lineup. So, yeah. and, you know, it was a transition, but I was there. So that was the the, uh, the dream come true part. And, but the other part, uh, as a player, when you finally, you know, get in that lineup, like you, like you said, Bob, when you see your name in that lineup, you know, you're like, okay, I'm getting prepared to play, but, you know, nothing's hit you. But now after that national anthem, and they say play ball, it was like, oh, this is it. <laughs> yeah, gotta go, gotta go back to muscle memory now. And what am I here for, right? Yeah, yeah, that, exactly. Yeah, well, I agree with that. I agree with that. Yeah, and you know, and Tony and I were talking before the show, Wes. Uh, you had to have some fun down in Philly, because let's face it, man, that was a, some kind that, of that was a wild club you were with. A little bit of a loose clubhouse, because I'm I'm looking at names like Crook Dykstra. Roger McDowell, Mitch Williams, oh, Wally uh, I could go on and on. Yeah. I mean, it, it probably it probably made you a little less nervous at times. And then you're looking at the Philly Fanatic running around the stadium. <laughs> That'd be a lot of fun at times. Well, I mean, it had its times. And, I mean, when you mentioned a name like Roger McDowell, Roger McDowell, he was there my first and second year. And mm -hmm. uh, he got traded, actually. Uh, he got traded off to the Dodgers. And yeah. so... Uh, the thing was that that 93 team was also a team of, uh, of the guys who was there who they kept from the, uh, because it was that expansion draft, you know, with the Marlins and the Rockets. Right, right. So, so the, uh, they went out and got Inca Villa, Eisenreich, and, uh, Milt Thompson in the outfield. So they were all veterans. And the only people that was there, uh, left, uh, off the, on the roster was me and Lenny Dykstra. Yeah. So Von Hayes was gone, Dale Murphy was gone, the guys who I came up with my rookie year. That's mm -hmm. who I was sitting behind. That's why I didn't play uh, until a whole week out, uh, you know, a whole week sitting on the bench. Yeah, I was playing behind Dale Murphy, Von Hayes, and Lenny Dykstra. Yeah, and in, in 93 season, West, 12 home runs, 45 ribbies. You hit over 280. Now, you, you win the NLCS versus Atlanta. I should tell our viewers Wes, uh, Tony, 4 for 11 in that NLCS, 364. Yes, remember watching. And, of course, the, uh, the, the loss to Toronto, Wes, I, I know you, we hate to bring this up, but, man, it was one of the great. It was a great series. It was a great series. Great and one series. of the most incredible uh, happenings in baseball history was the Joe Carter uh, home run. Uh, you know, you only had two at-bats in the series, but I just wanted – you to describe for our viewers the feeling when uh, Carter performed that those heroics. Well, I mean, I, I, I can't really describe it or explain yeah. it. I mean, it's hard. when you're watching it, you see it. I mean, it's just like baseball. You just wait for waiting for the uh, six four three, and or yeah. you wait for the home run. I mean, mm. it's it's the pastime. You know, any it's it's just like. Um, when you're on the field, you're anticipating the play. You're anticipating the ball come to you. And when the ball come to you, that's your opportunity to do it. So Joe, uh, as he said, you know, I don't know if he ever dreamed of ending a, hit a, a home run in the World Series or uh, ending the game. But, I mean, as an athlete, you you always uh, – me growing up, you always – I always envision myself uh, hitting a game-winning home run to end the game. You know, bottom of the night, bases loaded. 
nowhere to put them, you know, let the broadcaster, you know, you become the broadcaster. And there's the pitch, swung on drive, you know, your favorite broadcaster. And, you know, either Jack Brickhouse or Harry Carey. Holy cow! Hold yeah. on, hey, hey. You know, I mean, uh, you know, it's, 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 I mean, you know, and then when it happened, I just, I just sat there. I was, I think I just was numb. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> That's the feeling. I can't believe it because I, I was already, you know, we was already to just yeah. get these outs and let's go make it home and we got another game and hopefully I get to play in Philly, you know? Yeah. <laughs> boy, oh boy. That was so sad. it was really, it was just really a shock. It really was. And as we yeah. talk to Wes Chamberlain, uh, our guys in the back are showing a collage of his, uh, some of his old baseball cards different t at different times of his career. Tony, Quest? You know, and uh, Wes, about two months ago, I was watching Mr. Baseball. I'd never seen it before with Tom Selleck. I was falling over, and uh, I thought of your experiences in Japan. Is, is, did you have a Mr. Baseball-type experience there? You know what? Uh, and on actuality, yeah, I did. I mean, uh, Japan, is, <laughs> Japan is is uh, it's it's it's, it's really um, it's, <laughs> it's not America. No. It's, not, <laughs> it's not America. But I mean, it's a, it was an awesome lifetime of experience. I'm, you know, I'm I'm grateful for the opportunity. I mean, I, I'm glad I did get the opportunity, and I'm glad I had the experience. But I mean, you know, the way they play the game of baseball is not like how we play the game I of see. baseball. So that's what I mean. It's not America. You know, Japanese culture has their way of um, the the way they play baseball is almost like the style, the way of living, everyday mm -hmm. living. They play the game with a lot of with a lot of seniority mm -hmm. uh, and uh, and dignity. And, um, you know, it, yeah. well, it's seniority because they have so much respect for their elders. So it's uh. it's almost like. Um, uh, uh, as a, um, hmm. wow, uh, it, it's, it's just like how Mr. Baseball put it. Mm. Wow. <laughs> it is. It's with a lot of respect, you know, it's, it's just, you know, it, I, and, you know, I mean, he didn't, he didn't lie. I mean, they let him go over there and play and I saw the movie and, and I played there. So, I mean, you know, some of it's a little bit, you know, movie fabricated, but, uh, you know, it was it was pretty much right on. I mean, they love you. They get you over there. But, you know, it's supposed to, you know, it benefits your career. It helps some guys get back to the majors, which I thought would help mine. Uh, but, you know, it's just uh, they just the, the brand approaching the game is totally different. You know, yeah. mm -hmm. it is. They just just totally they play baseball, but they don't play it the way Americans play it. They play the game and this is the way they want to play it. And you just trying to figure out because of the way that you've been playing it. So now you're just trying to understand it. Yeah. <laughs> and I, um, as I was preparing for the show, Wes, I also looked at a few of your other uh, statistics. Now, I, I know you took pride in your defense. You're a pretty big guy, so you played the corner positions. Uh, pretty impressive lifetime fielding percentage. My question to you, uh, Wes, do you think enough guys these days – are concerned with being considered "quote unquote" all-around players, or is is it come to the point where it's, it's whatever puts change in your pocket? Wow, who asked that question? Tony that's, Bob. <laughs> that's me, Bob. It was Bob. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I kind of figured that was you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I could be. I mean, from 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 now being a fan and from experience, I mean, you you kind of go with the times. Yeah. So, you know, and then you go with with uh, who's winning the World Series. And now with the wild card, it kind of like uh, balances balances out. So it gives everybody who who knows uh, the past and who's uh, who's come through the game, who's played. And uh, from their experience of how the game was played to their experience of now as a manager to because everything is kind of like evolved around the general managers and how much money they're giving these guys. So uh, you have to make an adjustment. And that's one thing I like about baseball. It's like life. Uh, you know, one, you know, one day you could be poor then next day you could be rich. You can hit the lottery and then you could be poor again. Yeah. And the object is just learning how to stay, stay affluent, stay wealthy, has some temperance and balance in your life. So, uh, you know, you have to change with the times. And so with the guys, with the way that the game is going now, it's pretty much like 
the manager who can get the best out of what hand he's dealt, like a poker hand or somewhat, and, and can bring it out because now nobody's staying with an organization for 20 or 30 years. No, no not more. anymore. No. Yeah, so it's a, uh, it, you know, it, it's, it's like to me it's a dog-eat-dog, and you got to be able to get the best out of the thing. There's no more considered as a, he's a manager's or a player's type manager. No, you just got to get in there and, and, and work with the hand you deal dealt with and uh you know and, and i mean and somebody just gotta like you to give you uh an extra three or four years as a manager so yeah. it is it's, it's pretty difficult it's not as it's not as it was 10 years or you know 20 years ago i should say when i played yeah. uh these guys i mean it's just it's almost like if the player got it he's got it and they're not emphasizing on it because it's almost just like uh, if we have, we're going to win. We just trying to win. We just trying to get the outs, and we just trying to hit. And then Wes, you traded to Boston midseason, nineteen ninety four, um, for Paul Quantrill, Billy Hatcher. You wanted to get your first impressions of Fenway and that Green Monster when you're looking at it from home plate. First words out of your mouth. <laughs> uh, I, I really was kind of dumbfounded. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I, I mean, because, you know, it was just, I mean, in batting practice, you know, went out there with the stretch, uh, you know, you, everybody goes up there, and, and for the first time, I, I, I assume, really don't want to assume, but <laughs> yeah. I jogged out there when I stretched uh, and touched the green monster, and, and when I got in the uh, batter's box of, for BP, it was just like, mm. you know, like, oh, that's just, you know, just unbelievable, just, you know, kind of, yeah, I was a little speechless. Yeah. You know, so, it, I mean, like I said, it, it, not being from Boston, being from Chicago, just, it's just, uh, it, you become in awe when uh, you, when you're finally able to see the Major League Baseball stadiums that you've seen as a child on television, and mm -hmm. now you're like, let, you, you know, you, you're playing on them. So, you kind of, the first year the things goes around, so when I got traded, I was in almost like how I when I when I got called up when I you know got the call up so mm -hmm. I it was an American League uh, rookie experience going around from stadium to stadium so being the history like how Wrigley had it by being one of those uh, landmark stadiums I was really just speechless uh, standing in uh, in Fenway yeah it's uh, yeah. it's uh, it's some place that's for sure and uh, Tony we got a few more minutes with Wes question. And, and Wes, you know, I've always felt um, that it's been harder on players of color in Boston through the years. And uh, you could, you know, it's chicken and egg, the town. It's a very Catholic town. And, you know, on and on and on we go. Did you sense that when you were there? Oh, what a question. <laughs> <laughs> it, was like, it was like right out of the frying pan into the skillet. I just say that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Left the city of brotherly love and right into the Boston Tea Party, and yeah. I mean, you right, man. And then as you as you see the the numbers uh, for the African Americans have dwindled since the '90s and and to, uh, today, you know, look at the major league rosters. What are the the, the percentage numbers? Right. You know, for the African Americans. I mean, it, it is sad to say, but it is the truth. And I mean, I love talking about the truth because it is what it is. Because mm -hmm. you're not trying to be biased, and I... you're not trying to make it out of a racial thing. It's it's just what it is. And so when people allow me to express that, I'm glad you asked me that, Tony. Because uh, I was doing, a, I was getting ready to do another show, and they was mentioning on that. And I just wanted the guys to to understand it's it's not a, a, a you know we not I'm not making this a race thing. I'm just making it as a conversation yeah, as we can have a, a conversation fact. not yeah not politically but mm -hmm. just a, a, a conversation like we have it and that's what it is yeah i think the way I th the last i heard was i think it was nine percent uh blacks in their majors yeah. and of course yeah. you know the nba and, and numbers Sox are fans will deny it. it's the truth it is what it is it is what I, it is yeah yeah i think it's i think it's less than that i think it's six wow. <laughs> oh, if you look at the jackie robinson yeah. On the, uh, Jackie Robinson day, I mean, that's why they started letting all the guys wear number 42 on, you know, because yeah. there wasn't uh, enough African-Americans on the team to represent. Some teams didn't even have any African-Americans on the team. That's so true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. Uh, so, and, I mean, you got a lot of African-Americans that really love the game, but, and and I just, i say this, you know, because there is a minor league system, you know, it is a little difficult climbing up that ladder down there to so whereas the other sports, the NBA and NFL, mm -hmm. 
right. you go right to the league. So, you know, there's a whole lot of uh, development. And I even uh, was listening to MLB and ESPN about that uh, because of the percentage. And they was like, well, yeah, uh, over the, the draft this year had a, a, a such and such percentages of African Americans. Yeah, but them guys, uh, they in the minor leagues. And, you know, that's, you know, I mean, they're going to get that opportunity like Bryce Harper to just up and be in the show in two years, That's you know, yeah. and be starting, you know. So, I mean, it's a process, but it's, uh, you know, them guys, my hat's off to them. But, um, you know, I, I wish them, you know, well. But, I mean, hey, they got to make it. Yeah, mm -hmm. they got work to do. And, and before we let you go, Wes, maybe uh, tell our viewers uh, what, what you're up to these days. Uh, what, what's happening in the life of Wes C. these days? Well, I just uh, published my uh, book, and uh, it's called In the Game, the title. In the Game, it's a mm -hmm. biography, mm. my uh, autobiography. I just uh, wrote it and published it. It's uh, only an ebook at Amazon.com. Nice. Uh, you can look at West Chamberlain. And so this is volume one. It's uh, only 95 pages. Ah. Uh, it's a quick read. Uh, you know, I've, uh, it's been picking up on eBay. I've got a few uh, testimonies that uh, I want to put even on my blog and, uh so that I could blog and tweet the testimonies of the people who have uh, got it in the book just to hear some of their comments and their testimonies. But um, some people have uh, liked it. I mean, I just wanted to publish it. I had some people that offer me they want to publish it and do some things, but I just wanted to tell it like how we're talking. I had one person say, well, it sounds like uh, you're sitting in my living room and we was having a conversation. And I was like, well, thank you. You know, and that's, that's the way I, I wrote it, and that's the way I published it. And I mean, I just wanted to, I just wanted to just speak from my heart. You know, I didn't want it to be uh, a movie script or things of that nature. I just, you know, it, it is what it is. And I, and, and I've had uh, some positive, some, I, well, majority of all the comments was good. Uh, you know, guys cracked a little bit on the editing. Yeah. So I went back and tweaked those things. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, but uh, I mean, hey, I just told the first time writer, first time publisher of volume two and three, will be out later because I'm really pushing this one. Yeah. And uh, I'm just in Chicago uh, raising my, uh, you know, my kids. I got a son, Elon, in college, and I got two, three girls. Wow. One's getting ready to graduate. She's a senior. She plays softball, uh, mm -hmm. Honda Sophomore. My girls named uh, Naomi, Miriam, and Sarah. And so they're freshmen, sophomores, and uh, seniors. And Elon is the sophomore in college playing at Kishwaukee. So he's looking for a shot uh, uh, at uh He's uh, getting you know, going to Division One. He's in the junior college right now. Nice. Well, so he's going to, uh, yeah, he's going to play down in uh, Wichita this summer in uh, in the NBC. Nice. That's yeah. nice. And then my oldest son, yeah, my oldest son, West Junior, he's just living like you and me. He's just, you know, we work just a hardworking guy. <laughs> <laughs> he's the salt of the earth, and uh, if he's anything like his old man, he's a great guy. Listen, listen, Wes, our time's up, buddy. Uh, Okay. I want to I want to thank you again for all your cooperation. Thank you. It's been a lot of I'm fun. I'm sure we'll we'll probably try try to get you uh, on the other show again, like we did last year. Again, you're always welcome to come back on this show, maybe later on in the season. Meanwhile, we'll be in touch with each other, uh, and I'll try to plug that uh, book whenever I can, my friend. Thank you very much for having me, Bob and Tony. Our Anytime. pleasure. Anytime. You, you take care, Wes. My best to all. All right. You Good too. Night. God bless you all. Good night. Thank you. Bye -bye. You too.